Uh, so why did I have people voting in the, in the uh, cl cl case discussion? Partly because I wanted to force them to make a decision. Many people don't like to make decisions. They say, oh, I don't have enough information. But the real world says, I don't care how much, you know, you don't get that chance sometimes to get more information. The central question is, should ABC Health Plan offer coverage to their enrollees who want to go overseas for a medical procedure? Let's assume the medical procedure is appropriate and covered, not cosmetic surgery. This is a, a you know, um, they want their hip replaced or they want their hysterectomy to be done in Mexico or Thailand. How many of you think it's a good idea and that ABC Health Plan should cover that? So why did I have people voting in the, in the uh, cl cl case discussion? Partly because I wanted them to force them to make a decision. Many people don't like to make decisions. They say, oh, I don't have enough information. But the real world says, I don't care how much, you know, you don't get that chance sometimes to get more information. One, got one, one vote, two votes. Come on, two votes. Is that a vote or are you just scratching your head? <laughs> should seriously consider it. Okay, well, we'll put a maybe here. <laughs> but we're only allowing maybe once. We're going to have a couple rounds of voting. So I've got two and a maybe. Okay. How many? Another maybe. Uh, we're going to have a whole class full of maybes <laughs> now. How many? Let me go. To the, let me go to the no. They absolutely should not do this. Any? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Good. I've got some strong opinions here. And then the maybes. Raise your hands. One, one, two, three, four. Okay, we'll do five on the maybes. Okay, we're going to watch this maybe group in particular to see how they evolve during this uh, class discussion. <laughs>
India or Mexico. Why would there be more availability of organs there than in the U.S.? Any thought? Um, maybe some of the other people who would need those procedures in those countries are not undergoing those procedures, so then there's excess supply. She seemed also to really have a good sense of um, the whole room and who might be wanting to try to get in the discussion. You need a little emotional intelligence to do this kind of teaching. Um, if someone looks terrified and they're just trying to get the words out, just let them be, try to rephrase it and move on. But you will develop a pretty, within a class or two, a pretty good sense of who's confident, who can state themselves very clearly, who's very forceful. And the more forceful they are to you and to the class, the more forceful you can be back. Um, a lot of other countries allow the sale of organs. In mm. the U.S. you cannot put a value on human body parts and so it has, it's strictly by donation only. Whereas in some areas of India or other areas, it's just not regulated and you're allowed to actually buy live organs from people. Yeah, the U.S. Says, thinks that's an unethical practice, whereas other countries, if you want to sell your kidney or part of your, I guess you can't sell your heart. <laughs> so we had Dominique, who was quite forceful and quite black and white and had her opinion. It was perfect. It fit right into what I was hoping she would say. I mean, someone would say. And I also knew exactly how to push her. Uh, because she was expressing something I anticipated. And I want, and so, you know, I thought this is great and she's got the confidence that I can push her and challenge her and make her think of some of the things she has, you know, ruled out. Wait a minute, Dominique, aren't you contradicting yourself? <laughs> Absolutely not, because I, I think that um, there are serious ethical problems with allowing people to go to other poor countries and allow people who are poor and marginally nourished to sell their organs to rich people um, because they don't want to sit on a waiting list. I actually enjoy being challenged. Um, I think that I find it frustrating when people aren't challenged on their views, when you just leave it and accept it as it is, and sometimes it doesn't always make sense or there's weaknesses that haven't been considered. If one of the goals of the ABC Health Plan is to be ethical, the whole point of having this discussion is to come up with a, a policy that they can post on the internet and feel comfortable with in the, in, in the public um, opinion. And you're concerned that the ethics of this are uh, sketchy, sketchy <laughs> because... It depends uh, largely on the procedure. If you're going because you can get access to a surgeon who's done you know, more of these procedures, that's one thing. But to, sell, to go buy an organ from someone who might not, who is selling it because they're in debt to some loan shark, and then could get an infection that kills them, so the economic distribution of organs and babies probably doesn't seem right to you. I, I think that it's good for getting a better understanding and for developing knowledge that you do get challenged and you have to really think through the problem. Anybody thought, everybody agree? Those of you who voted yes, how do you feel? Who voted yes? David. I mean, we don't know what kinds of situations these people are if we look at the individual level. We may come to different conclusions, and if we look at, say, uh, all the countries together, maybe we look at individual countries and say, these have reasonable regulations, and these other countries do not. So the health plan might look for those server providers who have legitimate uh, means of access to organs and, and, and try to constrain where people went based on, on the, the ethics of how they've attained these things. Yeah. So I voted no, but, but in, in terms of positives here, what about the people uh, you know, in the U.S. who can't afford these procedures but need them? Um, so it's kind of the, the idea that yeah. they wouldn't have that um, access. See, so even though you may be putting some people in the host country at risk, you are actually creating access that otherwise, uh, for Americans, that otherwise wouldn't be possible. They can't get access to these organs. Yeah, Elle? Um, a counter argument, though, is that you're uh, taking work away from Americans when you do that. You're, you're harming the local health care market. In it's like globalization everywhere. What do we call that? Job killing? Outsourcing. Job killing. Job killing. Job killing. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite phrase. <laughs>
that position. Okay, what other goals is the health plan after? Um, I guess to provide the best um, safe care to their um, insured youth, but also to protect themselves against um, maybe someone who went to a different country and came back with complications, um, which would then cause their insurance costs to go up. If you have to make a decision, you have to integrate all that you've heard and still come up with yes or no. And so what does that mean in terms of the whether medical, which way does medical tourism play with respect to that issue? I think you can see it from both sides um, as a positive. They truly are getting these higher, high quality procedures at a lower cost. It's a benefit to the insurance company. So that's a good thing. And what's the downside? The downside is that if it's a procedure that wasn't covered um, in the U.S. or if they develop complications or something that will require continuing care when they get home, it will be a negative for the insurance company. So you lose control when you let people go overseas. You can lose control. And then they can go get something done, come back with an infection that shows up a week later, and what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, Julie? Along those same lines, it may be more difficult to hold doctors accountable if they're so far away and there are different um, regulations at the hospital where they're practicing. Basically, there's no legal protection. Right. But yeah. the health plan is you know, supposed to provide that accountability and protection for their paying customers. Are there other goals that come into play here for the health plan? Yeah, Tracy. Um, I, I think when customers are dissatisfied, uh, dissatisfied they have no way, no one represent them to the, either the, the overseas providers or the insurance providers. So I think for the, the insurance providers, they should uh, build a bridge somehow to, to help, the, to d deliver the message to, uh, for the uh, dissatisfied customers. So, so you're saying they could overcome this problem, the plan itself could yeah, overcome this problem by developing some kind of yeah, relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I guess part of the matter uh, that that's uh, maybe not discussed yet is the uh, role of uh, advanced technologies in driving these prices up. The difference between ten thousand dollar and hundred thousand dollars is not just the fee that the doctor is charging in local money, which is a part of it. It's doing all these imaging and high tech um, devices, using them more than needed in mm -hmm. the U.S. That's driving the prices up. So that might be part of the changes that this plan may bring forcing Both. the prices down in the U.S. So it, there might be, a, for society, a good thing, both in forcing better post-acute care uh, and also saying, you know, your, your, your $103,000 is being wasted on a lot of inappropriate imaging, inappropriate testing. Yeah, Petra? Um, bringing people in um, and you know, putting them up in hotel rooms. Um, they're going to be spending money at like, restaurants there. Yeah. So it could, there's a potential to improve the economy of these shanty of these communities, and then they in turn could, uh, you know, be making more money and increase, um, you know, uh, increase the salary of the doctors. Raise that are the there standard of living. Raise the standard of living. Why would the government of Singapore be encouraging and sponsoring these things? And India. These are, a lot of these projects are government sponsored. What are they thinking? Ellen. It's good for the local economy. It's good for public relations. It raises the profile of healthcare services in that country to people abroad. It, it's bringing in the dollars. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think we've gotten some good discussion out here. Um, let's see how we feel now. We're still health plan, you know, on the board here, trying to decide. Uh, we're going to take a second vote now. I've got to switch instruments. OK, how many yeses that they should? They should. One, one. You can't, no more maybes, by the way. Maybes are out. So yes or no. Uh, raise your hand high enough for me to count it. One, two, three. <laughs> There's always a waffler. One, two, th one, two three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to assume, well, I'm going to force it. How many no's? Raise your hand high. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, good. Everybody did vote. Okay. 
So have any of the no's changed, or are they still no's, same no's? Anybody who voted yes or maybe before go to no? So who changed to no? Why did you change to no? Um, I think that there are serious concerns about disparities. And who is this procedure or this concept actually benefiting? Um, I guess for me, I need to see more really hard facts and research about what happens to the host country. Are they actually receiving these benefits, or is it just creating a greater disparity that's, in the end, making it worse? So you took what I call a conservative approach and said, no until I know more. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and many decisions, that is the way people want to behave, is they want to say, no until I know more. Unfortunately, a lot of times, that's all you're going to know. But other times, you can pursue more information. And certainly, this health plan could pursue more information. Yeah. How many people, and now obviously, we got more yeses. Who switched to yes? So Peter, why did you switch? <laughs> my vote the first time was no. Um, and my vote the second time was yes. Um, and it was a cautious yes. But I think what, what I really liked is, is throughout the discussion, um, we learned I mean, I learned from the students. I also learned from, from Nancy and, and learned a lot about um, the details that were just slightly beyond the reading um, and things that I, I couldn't have gotten just from the reading alone. Yeah, I changed my vote because uh, of the views of the participants that was mentioned during the program and the class. Uh, so the views were sort of strengthened my positive view toward the program. So I shifted from a maybe to a yes. Um, well, I was a maybe initially because I had some concerns about how allowing such uh, allowing people to go to do medical tourism would be structured. And I, after hearing the facts of the case and thinking about it, when forced to make a decision, I was a conditional yes. Yeah, I, I voted no initially, and I stayed with that. Although I was much, I wanted to say yes with a lot of conditions, like that. It really depends on the situation, whether or not um, the, the medical tourism should, should be allowable, but that wasn't an option, so I stuck with my no vote instead.